Hello, I'm Ken Follett, and in this video, I chat about some of the characters in my new book, The Armour of Light. Sal and Kit are the major characters right at the start of the novel. They live in a village which is ruled rather repressively by a squire. And what happens in chapter one is that Sal's husband, Kit's father, is involved in a terrible accident. Sal is very angry because the accident was caused by the son of the squire. She quarrels with the, authority in the authorities in the village and Sal and Kit have to leave and they're destitute. And so we see the two of them, Kit grows up, they're both involved in the, with the machines that made the Industrial Revolution. She becomes a social leader, secretary of a trade union, and he becomes a maker of these machines. So his, he uses his brain and um, she uses her skill with people and her determination. They both end up on the battlefield of Waterloo. Well, I've always liked writing strong women. Uh, they're not always as physically strong and aggressive as Sal. Tradition, when I was a boy in novels, was that women generally was, had, had played sort of supporting roles. And they quite often had to be rescued by brave men. Uh, and they very, very rarely made key decisions in the course of the story. So it's really been a tradition for me to have strong women. I enjoy them and um, the readers enjoy them too. Amos is um, uh, what was called a clothier. In other words, he's an entrepreneur in the cloth business. There's a little bit of me in Amos. He is a sincere but rather naive young man. And he inherits this cloth business at quite a young age. Uh, and so we see him learning very quickly. He's uh, a strong character. He doesn't give in easily. Uh, he's, when, when necessary, he's prepared to stand up to bullies in the town. He also um, falls in love with absolutely the wrong woman. Elsie is the daughter of a bishop. She's very idealistic in a good way. And her father, the bishop, is a bit lazy and a bit cynical. There was a conflict at this time. People such as bishops and prime ministers really did not like the idea of working people learning to read. Elsie is absolutely the opposite of, opposite of that. And she wants to start a Sunday school to teach children to read. Now, from about the age of seven, these children would work in the mills. So um, the only time she can get them is on Sunday afternoon. And that's when she tries to teach the children of Kingsbridge to read and write. So she is, she's heroic in a, quite a special way. She's a character I like very much. Defiant when she comes up against authority. Women in the 18th century could not really be leaders of political movements because it was just not done. What women did was, was um, backstage, always. And so Elsie is a typical idealistic woman changing things, changing things in the 18th century, but, but doing it with a low profile. I like Spade. Uh, you know, he's a bit roguish. And he does have an affair with a married woman. Uh, he's smart. Uh, He's radical, but he's got a way of keeping out of trouble. And he's, he's also a very skilled weaver uh, who, who actually makes a lot of money. He falls in love with the bishop's wife, the mother of Elsie, who we just talked about. Uh, and it's a, it's a hot love affair. It's a hot love affair, but it's also unbelievably forbidden. Somebody says to him, if, you, if people find out about that, they're going to crucify you. Well, they're not actually going to crucify him, literally, but it would be the, you know, the equivalent, he would be drummed out of town, his business would fail and so on. He takes great risks because of this fabulous woman that he's fallen for. And that's the kind of character I like. Hornbeam is really the bad guy in this. At some point we do, in the story, we do find out why he's so awful, but we didn't, still don't have much sympathy for him. He's quite ruthless in business, this is. 
uh, and, and cruel. People say to him, you know, you know, if you talk to your hands and said to them, you know, I'm bringing in this machine and I want to explain to you why I'm bringing it in and how I hope it's not going to affect you too much and not going to throw too many people. And he says, he says, I'm not, he says, I'm not having the hands tell me how to run the business. That's the kind of character he is. Um, and so he's a rotter and um, he comes to a, um, a pretty horrible end. Actually, in the first draft, I, I didn't give him such a horrible end. And people said to me, that's not, that's not horrible enough. <laughs> and they were right. I really like Arabella, who is the bishop's wife that Spade falls in love with. She's uh, gorgeous in a quite a special way. She's older than Spade, quite considerably older than Spade. She says that to him, I'm so much older than you. Uh, and um, but she is very alluring, and uh, he falls hopelessly in love with her. She's also quite. Um, I mean, she can be a little bit um, scathing. She sees through people. She nobody can pull the wool over her eyes. So as well as being um, very attractive and sexy, she's also quite smart. I have had a lot of sympathy with Spade falling in love with her. <laughs>